Hey, want to talk about your right to participate in the health and safety processes in your workplace? Well, that's what today's video is about. I want to talk about some opportunities that you might not be aware of, some you might be aware of, and just provide you with a bit more information on your right to participate. Now, before we get started, could you do me a favor? If you do like the video, make sure you do click that like button because what it does is it boosts up the uh, rating of the video in the YouTube algorithm. And as a result, more people get to know about their rights as workers in the workplace in Canada. Let's put seven minutes on the clock. We'll put it on down here and we'll get started right now. First off, what does it mean is your right to participate? This is your opportunity granted by law in Canada to have the right to have input into the health and safety processes, procedures, and initiatives in your workplace. This is a good thing because many minds brought together bring different perspectives and different thoughts and often different ways of doing things. Consider this, the contribution is participation. In short, what I mean is you do have a say. Well, sort of, and let's look at it a bit more. Now, the first thing you're thinking about likely is the Health and Safety Committee, and that's typically the what most people think is participation, is being on the Health and Safety Committee. A couple of things, though, about Health and Safety Committee. Chances are, if you're new to the workplace, they're already established. Okay, a lot of times uh, employers are compliant and they do have a well-functioning Health and Safety Committee. So... It doesn't mean that you can't be on the Health and Safety Committee. It just means that you might have to be patient. A lot of times, too, these positions are elected or appointed. And if there's a union in the workplace, they're often appointed, uh, as far as the worker point of part of things, they're appointed by the union. So don't let that deter you, though. Put your name forward. Uh, put it forward to your supervisor, your manager, even talk to the chairpersons of the Health and Safety Committee and ask them if there's an opportunity that you could participate. If it's a unionized workplace, talk to your shop steward. Don't let the fact that it's already in place or already established deter you. Now, the other thing with health and safety committees is you can often present to them as a worker. And this could be done as a written submission or in person. So don't feel that you don't have a say with your health and safety committee. Now, if it's a smaller workplace, in a lot of jurisdictions, they have the number set at 20. So if it's less than 20 people, often you have a health and safety representative. These are often appointed positions, or sometimes people will step forward and ask to serve as the health and safety representative. And so if it's established, uh, you might have to just put your name forward. So if that person decides to uh, retire from it or it's a process of attrition where it's only a two or three year term and uh, they step down, then you can be the next person. Uh, but once again, same thing. Don't let it deter you that you can't input to the health and safety representative. Often approaching them in writing or asking if you can help out with something is also a good way to participate. Now, a few other considerations that you might not be aware of or you might not have considered. One is the job hazard assessments in the workplace, other documents that are used in the workplace, other safety documents, and of course, making suggestions to your employer. So let's have a quick look at all three right now. The job hazard assessment, these things should be reviewed or these documents should be reviewed as soon as you're hired. A good orientation will have you review the job hazard assessments for your position and in your workplace. They should be reviewed sooner uh, or if there's changes such as uh, you have a new piece of equipment comes in and you're going to be using it, then obviously the job hazard assessment should be reviewed and additions made to it. So that being the case, all employees should be provided the opportunity to input. Some may choose not to. And so that might be your opportunity to input into the job hazard assessment, especially if you have extensive experience in any kind of revision, such as this new piece of equipment I just mentioned. All employees should be signing off on the job hazard assessment. So if you haven't signed off or you haven't seen it, that's also your opportunity to participate. Now, many employees will have other safety documents such as safe work guides, safe work procedures, or large overarching documents such as one that uh, pertains to maybe to scaffolding and working at heights or whatever the case may be. If you're an expert in the field and uh, you ha see that these documents could use some additional polishing per se or edits, then by all means, step forward and make a suggestion. 
Uh, another area that a lot of people don't consider is with these safe work guides, a lot of times they become outdated and there's a good opportunity for edits, especially in cases where uh, workplaces have changed the brand of equipment they're using or the type of equipment and their original document still pertains to the old equipment. This gives you an opportunity to step forward and, and offer to make a change. Another area that a lot of people don't think about is corporate newsletters or corporate safety bulletins. A lot of times these things get started where a person is just on fire for safety and passionate and wants to do this, but a lot of times they die off either from a lack of content or the original person that guided the initiative has left or just grown tired of it. So having a lot of people participating and providing guest edits or how should we say, um, well, guest edits would be a good term. That keeps these things, these initiatives alive. So don't feel that that wouldn't be a good place to participate. Another area to think about is English as a second language. If English is your second language, you have a good command of the English language, and you notice that there's a need for translation into your language for other workers in the workplace that may be struggling, that could also be a good place to step forward and offer to provide edits or authorship. One other final point that I did mention before is just uh, input and presentations to your employer. A lot of times safety initiatives don't fall into any one category, such as there might be no wellness initiatives in your workplace and you want to provide some. So that might be an opportunity for you to approach your employer and say, hey, can I give a presentation to the management group or something to that effect? on wellness. I think it's a good idea. Make sure that you have a, a good case in writing. A couple of other considerations with contributions that we need to address and look at. Number one is don't get frustrated or angry that your contributions aren't taken the first or second attempt. A lot of times you have to make a couple of different approaches to things or you may have to take what you originally did, rewrite it, re-edit it, and, and submit it again. Don't get frustrated, don't get um, deterred, but just understand that it, it, sometimes a different approach is all it takes. The other thing to consider is with your JHA contribution that you've wanted to do, a lot of times uh, uh, employers have already established methods for doing things, and if what they've got in place is safe and it's providing the same level of coverage that your uh, proposed edit would, then you know what? Don't worry about it. However, if you find that there is holes and you do need to make a contribution, by all means do so. Just keep in mind that new is not necessarily better. Now the other thing is with all safety edits, don't confuse previous workplace policy to legislation, code, or regulation. Don't be afraid to sit in your contribution for a few days or even ask for another person's input. Nothing is wasted by having another set of eyes look at something. In closing, your basic rights of a worker is an entitlement. It's law in Canada, but it's also an entitlement. You need to exercise it by speaking up. Just keep in mind with anything else, good workplace relationships go a long way. So be civil and respectful from when you're making your contributions or asking to participate. Also keep in mind that health and safety committee representatives or health and safety representatives might already be established. So you might have to wait your turn doesn't mean you have to stop trying, you just might have to wait. Contributing is participating and there are many different ways and avenues that you can contribute. So don't feel if you don't, uh, if things don't work out the first time, try again. Above all and beyond all, don't feel that you have to work in an unsafe environment. It might be possible to make it better and safer just by making a few suggestions. Once again, thank you for watching. If you like the video, click that like button. Okay, if you didn't like it, you can click that unlike button, but do me a favor, leave a comment below and let me know why. And if you have an idea on how I can improve, do the same thing, leave a comment. If you're new to the channel and you haven't done so yet, click that subscribe button. I appreciate all the subscribers. Ding the bell and you'll get notified of new content. Until we talk again, hey, think safety, talk safety, do safety. That way we provoke it at home and in the workplace. If you're interested in more safety videos, you know what I'm going to do? I'll leave the whole entire playlist for the rights of workers on this side, and I'll leave another playlist for incident investigations on this side. Feel free to take a look at both. Until we talk again, bye for now.